Do you remember last week's episode? We're Diplomats is in Malaysia. So I've just arrived in Malaysia. Yay! Why are we in Malaysia? The reason why we are here is to attend the Malaysia International Hala Showcase or MIHAS. This year's MIHAS is being held here at the Malaysia International Trade and Exhibition Center. Then let's go inside. The scale of the exhibition was bigger than expected. This is the 2024 Malaysia International Halal Showcase. Mihas is known as the world's largest halal product exhibition. So how big is it? It is so big that it won the Guinness World Record for the largest attendance for a halal trade show. Mihas has achieved the Guinness World Records title of the largest attendance for a halal trade show. Last year, Mihas had 38,566 visitors, and this is the number that won the Guinness World Record at the opening ceremony this year. Congratulations, you are officially amazing! And here at this year's Mihas, you can see the overall trends of the halal industry, including not only halal food, but also halal medicine, finance, fashion, cosmetics, and eco-friendly technology. MIHAS 2024 was held from September 17th to 20th. Under the theme of globalization of halal innovation, 66 countries set up 2028 booths and showcased their products and services. MIHAS is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. But I wondered if so many countries were interested in the halal industry and participated in MIHAS 20 years ago. I decided to meet the CEO of Matri, the organizer of MIHAS, and talk about MIHAS and the halal industry. So this year marks the 20th anniversary of the MIHAS. So was there a special occasion that the showcase was first held? So it started in 2004. Mm. It started as a domestic uh, event. Uh, focusing only on the consumer. And uh, at the point of time, uh, halal was not the agenda of the, of the government mm. or, or, the, or of the country. Uh, but uh, after two years, we realized that there's a big potential when uh, we brought in uh, foreign buyers. So what's so special about when the, the 20th uh, edition of Mihas? I uh, feel that uh, this year is different mm -hmm. from last year, yeah. bigger mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, uh, number of buyers, foreign buyers we're bringing mm -hmm. in. And then, uh, of course, the main components of uh, MIHAS uh, this year uh, covers uh, the exhibition, the international sourcing program, the knowledge hub, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the um, uh, MIHAS award. So with all these uh, combinations of activities that we are organizing uh, this year, uh, we believe that we will be able uh, to to take uh, the uh, Malaysia halal industry above and beyond mm. what been uh, and uh, this is also a, a very important event where will determine whether our uh, plans to uh, internationalize Mihas uh, will be successful or not. And I think with the result that we are getting, mm -hmm. uh, God willing, I think we can do mm. better outside there as well. Through the conversation with him, I was able to get an overview of the exhibition. While walking around the fair, I came across an interesting booth. It was a booth for an Islamic finance fintech company. Islamic finance or halal finance. I wondered what kind of financial system it referred to. So, I decided to find out. Hi, I know there are food and beverage that has to go through a certain process mm -hmm. to be certified as a halal product. 
Yeah. But the fintech is also halal. For Islamic fintech or fintech, it's more of the um, uh, contract behind it. It's all uh, based on the contract, lah, or halal contract. So it has to be Sharia compliant. You have to go through Sharia agencies to make sure that your product is um, um, Sharia compliant. Halal finance, or Islamic finance, refers to ways of doing financial transactions and banking while respecting Islamic law or Sharia. Halal finance operates under a unique system that differs from the kinds of finance we commonly know. Halal finance is based on the belief that money itself should have no value. It's based on the thought that money should only have value when exchanged for goods and services, and that money should not be made with money. Therefore, the payment and receipt of interest payments is prohibited. That's because lending money and receiving interest is considered unfair profiteering. So how does the Islamic bank earn revenue? Suppose you have a client who wants help from a bank to buy a property. In that case, the bank will purchase the property instead, then receive payment and agreed profit margin from the client in installments. And then, the bank will hand over ownership at the end of the installments. This type of financial transaction is called murabaha. It's the most commonly used Islamic financial technique. Additionally, investments in financial products with uncertainty, such as gambling and derivatives, are prohibited. Muslim investors should seek Sharia-compliant investment opportunities that align with Islamic values and ethical standards. Interesting. The world of halal industry seems truly limitless. Now, why don't we meet some of the other halal companies that are participating in this year's Nihas? So you are based in Malaysia? Yeah, correct. Okay, could you introduce your company? We are manufacturer for products, for cosmetics, uh, supplement. Our company is a Muslim, Muslim uh, manufacturer company. So we will do products according to the Sharia law food. You should note that only companies that have or are applying for halal certification can participate in MIHAS. Therefore, all of these are halal companies' booths. Our company name is Meet Me. We are a food manufacturer. We have to make sure the whole process for our uh, like supplier, we have to make sure our supplier is halal supplier. Everything also we have to check. So our company is a Malaysian skincare manufacturer. So our factory is a uh, HALA certified, uh, GMP certified. Many companies said they came here to expand their export markets. This is local product. We hope we can recommend our local product to international market. So are you exporting to other countries? Currently? Yeah, currently we export to uh, Singapore, uh, Brunei, uh, Australia and also Canada. Yeah. So why did you participate in this year's Nihas? It's very good to get overseas uh, customers, uh, opportunity, working opportunity to, together in the Nihas. So are you exporting to other countries as well? Uh, yes, we are now currently exporting our products to the Indonesia, mm -hmm. Iraq, and some Middle East countries, uh -huh. uh, and also Southeast Asia countries such as uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, yeah. According to Korea International Trade Association, the current Muslim population is estimated at about 1.9 billion, accounting for 24.7% of the world's population, and it is projected to increase to 3 billion by 2060. The halal product is beyond any religion. Uh -huh. It is about the processing that is cleaner, uh, more hygienic, yeah, so that's the difference. Non-halal products can be eaten and used by non-Muslims. But halal products can be eaten and used by both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Therefore, if halal products are sold, they can be exported not only to the halal market, but also to the non-halal market. So I doubt that we could expect our export market to expand. Is that why? It seems like many Korean companies are turning their attention to the halal market. How did I know? There were 32 Korean company booths participating in this year's MIHAS. So let's meet some Korean companies that participated in MIHAS. 
먼저 대표님 업체 소개를 먼저 업체 소개를 좀 부탁드릴게요 회사 소개를 회사 소개를 짧게 부탁드릴게요 전통 김치부터 해가지고 비빔밥 잡채 소스 같은 케이소스 사종을 어, 개발하려 수출하고 있다가 이제 최근 들에서 현지화를 위해서 짜장 마요하고 고추장 마요를 이제 개발을 해 왔습니다. 저희는 세계 최초로 식물성 콜라겐 원료를 개발한 B2B 그리고 그 원료를 활용한 B2C 브랜드 활동을 하고 있습니다. 기존의 콜라겐은 모두 동물성입니다. 소, 돼지, 닭에서 나오는 추출 비닐로 이제 콜라겐을 사용하고 있고 저희가 식물성 콜라겐으로 전 세계 콜라겐을 대체한다는 미션을 가지고 회사를 설립하고 지금 나오게 되었습니다. 저희가 정수기와 공기청정기 같은 환경가전 제품을 렌탈하고 일시불로 판매하고 있는 그 청원화에서 해외 법인입니다. 법인 중에 하나입니다. 안구건조 쪽 치료기를 만드는 서동 메디칼 대표 김창훈입니다. 시시아를 이용해서 DNA 검출을 하는 키트를 만들고 있고요. 네. 같은 기술을 이용하면 식품 중에 돼지가 혼입되어 있으면 당사의 키트를 이용해서 들어있는지 안 들어있는지 검출해낼 수가 있습니다. 그러면 이번에 이 미하스에 참가하게 되신 계기는 어떻게 되나요? 한랄 시장이 이제 급상승을 하고 있다 보니까 중동이나 이런 남아시아 쪽에만 국한된 게 아니고 전 세계적으로 이제 비건 한랄 트렌드여가지고 그런지 많이 이제 바이어들이 요구를 하더라고요. 비건, 뭐 무슬림, 힌두 이런 종교적인 이유 또는 이제 정치적인 이유 때문에 보통 콜라겐을 섭취할 수 없는 인구들이 있습니다. 필요한데 콜라겐을 못 먹고 있어요. 동물 소나 돼지를 사용할 수 없으니까 그런 분들은 어떻게 보면 되게 필요한데 못 먹던 영역이라서 한랄 이쪽으로 먼저 좀 포커싱을 맞추게 되었습니다. 그 말레이시아 시장 같은 경우에는 뭐 아시겠지만 한국 기업들 특히나 이제 한류 붐을 타고 한국 제품에 대한 선호도가 상당히 높았습니다. 또이 정수기 시장이라는 것이 기본적으로 어쨌든 소득이 돼야 이 정수기 제품에 대한 수요가 있습니다. 그래서 그런 부분들을 감안을 해서 저희도 이제 추가적으로 진출을 하게 됐습니다. As we talked. I understood why these companies wanted to enter the halal market, including Malaysia. I summarized it briefly in my own way. The reason why these companies want to enter the halal market, it is because of new opportunities and possibilities. Then, how do they forecast the halal market? 앞으로 할랄 시장이 얼마나 중요해질 거라고 생각을 하시나요? 한랄의 어떤 시장이라든지 어떤 규모 자체는 점점 성장하고 있거든요. 왜냐하면 한랄 인구는 25억, 3, 30억 정도의 규모 시장이고 그 인구수가 점점 늘어나다 보니까 향후에도 어마어마하게 이제 크게 이제 성장하리라고 생각합니다. 올해부터 이슬람 국가, 특히 인도네시아가 한랄을 의무화하는 게 이제 예고되어 있고 실행이 되기 시작을 했고요. 그래서 인도네시아의 경우에는 한랄 식품과 비할랄 식품이 매대가 분리돼서 판매될 예정이고요. 말레이시아도 조금은 더 느린 속도긴 하지만 변화가 있을 거라고 보고 그리고 이제 중동이나 이런 쪽도 생각을 해서 개발을 했습니다. 안구건조증 환자는 전 세계 인구 80% 이상입니다. 한라에서도 80% 이상이 다 안구건조증 환자이기 때문에 저희들은 시장은 무궁무진하다고 봅니다. However, while talking to many people here today, I learned that the reason many companies decided to enter the halal market was not simply because of the large proportion of the Muslim population worldwide. 유럽에 나가게 되면 이제 할랄이면 비건이고 어느 정도 프리미엄이라고 생각이 들기 때문에 그리고 이제 그 
바이어 시장들이 있어요. 그래서 그 시장들이 또 규모가 좀 되기 때문에 전 세계 시장으로 동물성을 같이 가미시키면 수입하기가 상당히 규제가 심합니다. 칼날이라는 게 사실 이제 뭐 돼지를 사용하고 이런 것보다 그 제조 과정에서의 그 클린함이라는 게 굉장히 강조되는 것 같은데 또 다른 해석처럼 하나의 좀 가이드 기준 높은 규격의 기준처럼도 느껴지는 것 같습니다. 그래서 한랄 시장을 노리지 않더라도 한랄은 맡아놓는 게 좋다고 저는 생각합니다. As I mentioned in last week's episode, in order to be recognized as a halal product, it must go through a very strict certification process. Many people I met here predicted that in the future, halal products will increasingly be understood as products that are not only used by people who believe in a certain religion, but also clean and safe products. This was one of the important reasons why they had positive doubts about the halal market. This year, 66 countries participated in MIHAS, and a total of 2,028 promotional booths were set up. However, it is not only companies that want to sell and promote their products that attend MIHAS. This is the site of the international sourcing program hosted by Matrade. It is a program that connects Malaysian exporters with overseas buyers. This is the place where the extra meetings are taking place between sellers and buyers. I'm from Nigeria. What kind of products are you looking for? Uh, coffees, food processing products, like uh, what we call biscuits. And then of course, we're looking for equipment to you know, manufacture and produce production line, uh, stuff like that. Uzbekistan is like mostly they're looking for halal industry since the, it's a Muslim country. So therefore, uh, this kind of uh, exhibition are very important for them, like for us as well. A total of 280 buyers from 45 countries attended Mihas this year. I was walking around the meeting site and came across a familiar name. Republic of Korea is here. How many Korean companies do you think took part? So there are one, two, three. There are nine Korean buyers here. I'm going to meet some Korean buyers now. 오늘 먼저 여기 어떤 이유로 참여하게 되셨는지랑 또 어떤 이제 업체에서 일하고 계시는지 소개를 좀 부탁드릴게요. 어, 말레이시아인의 패션 디자이너들을 한국에 초대해서 한국의 지금 현재 모디스 패션 시장에 대한 전 세계 이슬람 문화권의 전 세계 무슬림 시장 패션 시장을 진출하고 싶어서 왔습니다. But wait, what exactly is modest fashion? Have you ever heard of it? Modest fashion is spreading as the world's Muslim population increases and the halal industry grows. The concept of modest fashion is rooted in the Islamic belief that one should dress modestly out of respect for oneself and others. It's a type of fashion that minimizes body exposure and does not reveal the body's silhouette. It's characterized by high necklines, long sleeves, low hems, and loose silhouettes. Modest fashion also includes the hijab. And now, it's gaining popularity among a growing number of young Muslim women who want to pursue their individuality while still adhering to Islamic principles. The global modest fashion industry was estimated to be worth 295 billion US dollars in 2021, and it's expected to reach 375 billion dollars by 2025. And whenever I meet Muslims, I feel that the clothes they wear are a little different from the everyday clothes I wear. But I never thought about looking at these clothes from the perspective of the fashion industry. That is why I found this conversation very interesting. Korean Muslim fashion designer가 없어요. 그래서 말레이시아가 패션 산업에 좀 나름대로 이름이 있기 때문에 말레이시아 패션 디자이너를 한국에 초대해서. 우리하고 동대문에 있는 시장 분들하고 같이 코업을 하기 위해서 코브랜딩 
그이 모디스트 패션 쪽을 이제 좀 알아봐야겠다 하신 계기가 어떻게 되시는지 한국에 1년에 한 100만 명 정도 무슬림 관광객이 옵니다. 그리고 동대문이 지금 현재 상권이 죽었는데 내가 볼땐 동대문 스피드 스피드 패션 72시간 내에 옷이 나올 수 있잖아요. 모든 게잘돼 있잖아요. 그래서 그들이 살수 있는 물건을 우리가 동대문에서 만들어서 그들한테 팔, 팔아야지 동대문 상권도 하나 나고 He dreams of entering the global Muslim fashion market by collaborating with Malaysian colleague. Why collaborating with Korean fashion industry? There are a lot of other countries as well. Uh, one is because Korea technology to, to develop the clothes is very good now. So we have designed and the technology to make the clothes is from Korea. So we combine that both. Because the silhouette must be hidden and body exposure must be minimized, it may seem that modest fashion may not pursue diverse designs. But the modest fashion I saw in person was far from it. Despite the restrictions, there were many possible different and unique designs. A variety of patterns and colors. I couldn't take my eyes off the fashion show. K 패션의 표준이 이슬람 국가에서 통할 수 있는 그런 표준을 같이 개발을 해서 하게 된다면 말레이시아도 이익이 보고 한국도 이익이 보고 이 패션 시장이 거의 뭐몇천억 이상의 가치가 있는 거니까 시장이 있으니까 그걸 당연히 우리가 해야죠. We can uh, insert the handbook um, concept into the modern fashion. I look forward to Korea and Malaysia joining hands to bring a breath of fresh air to the modest fashion industry. Do you know what I found most surprising while covering Mihas for four days? It was the incredible popularity of Korean culture in Malaysia. There was a lot of interest in Korean halal products. But another surprising fact, not all of the Korean food products displayed here are manufactured by Korean companies. I'm doing snack, halal snack manufacturing in Malaysia. And I saw your products and it has Korean language on it. Yeah, we are the biggest uh, seaweed manufacturer in Malaysia. So we import the seaweed from Korea. Uh -huh. So we localize the flavor over here. And this booth is clearly a Malaysian company, but they are selling not only Malaysian spices, but also Korean spices. And they have a lot of different kinds. First, could you tell us about your company a little bit? We are a factory, world uh -huh. prominent in the uh, in Malaysia. Uh -huh. So what we have is um, spices mm -hmm. in form of powder uh -huh. and cube. So when did you start producing Korean spices? I think Korean spice, you know, they was trending a couple years back. So we came up with um, to, to, to fit, you know, there's a requirement, you know, people wanted to mm. try. Mm. I wonder how popular they are, the Korean products. Oh, very popular. Very popular? Yes, very oh. popular, of course. Can you try like some Korean food? As well? Yeah, we're going to let get you to cook. Oh. Yeah, it's one, two, three. It's yes, very simple. Come. Korean food made by a Malaysian company. Let me try making it. <laughs> this is like kimchi jeonggur in Korean. Uh -huh. So this is the powder for kimchi jeonggur. It is not difficult at all. It is similar to making ramen. Which one is your favorite? For me, daganjong. Put it. Wow. It's very fast. Ooh. Oh. Is it nice? Yes. But it has like some kind of Malaysian flavor in it, right? They said they combine Malaysian and Korean flavors for localization. 
eating Korean food made by a Malaysian company. It was truly a new experience. I discovered something else that was interesting. So these are Korean ramen made by a joint venture between Korea and Malaysian company. I think Korean ramen is really popular in Malaysia. So how was the joint Korean-Malaysian Halal Ramen Company born? 네, 일단 저희 회사는 신세계 마미라고 하는 회사고요. 한국의 신세계 푸드하고 말레이시아의 마미 회사가 합작을 해서 만든 회사입니다. 그래서 신세계 푸드에서 제품의 맛을 개발을 하고 그거에 맞춰서 그 마미에서는 생산을 담당을 하고 있습니다. 근데 어떻게 이렇게 신세계 마미라는 회사가 탄생을 한 거예요? 계기가 있을까요? 한랄 푸드에 대한 그 소비자 니즈가 커지면서 그에 대한 시장이 클 것으로 판단을 했고요. 그에 따라서 저희 저희도 이제 한국에서만 이제 사업을 하는 것이 아니라 좀전 세계로 이제 확대를 하고자 해서 좀 글로벌화를 위하여 이렇게 회사를 합작해서 설립하게 되었습니다. 근데 이제 사실 한국 회사들도 지금 이렇게 한랄 제품을 따로 만들어서 수출을 하고 있기도 하잖아요. 네네. 근데 그런 방식이 아니라 알레이시아 회사랑 이렇게 합작을 해가지고 회사를 만들게 된 이유가 있을까요? 아무래도 저희 신세계 푸드라는 회사는 라면을 만든 회사가 아니기 때문에 대신 R&D의 능력이 있고 마미라는 회사는 라면과 그 감자칩의 전문 회사이지만 한국에 대한 뭐 맛이라든지 이런 것들 조금 부족할 수 있기 때문에 각자의 회사에 좀 장점을 모아서 이렇게 장점을 살린 회사를 설립을 했다고 봐주시면 될것 같습니다. 근데 매출이 어때요? 지금 말레이시아에서? 어, 말레이시아는 특히나 한식에 대한 또 한국 음식에 대한 또 한국 문화에 대한 인식이 상당히 좋기 때문에 한국 라면에 대한 인지도도 계속 올라가고 있고요. 덕분에 저희 한식 라면도 매출 출시한 지 오래되지 않았지만 매출은 계속 성장을 하고 있고 This company's signature product is this one. And it is famous for being incredibly spicy. So how did the Malaysian people who have tried this ramen react? Spicy! <laughs> Good and spicy! Good and spicy? Yeah. Actually, I like it. You like it? Mm. So we'll try this ramen, which was produced by a joint venture between Korea and Malaysia company. This is really spicy. It was similar to ramen bought in Korea, but it was really spicy. It is very interesting to see that different types of Korean halal products produced in different ways were popular in Malaysia. While covering Mihas, I also came to think that the halal market will become more important in the future. So what do you think is the potential of the halal market globally? If the, uh, some of the non-Islamic countries are also venturing into the halal business, mm. there's an indication that uh, the potential is huge. Mm. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Europe, India. Uh, I followed the Prime Minister in his official visit. And one of the uh, subject discussed was all about halal. Mm. So if you are a non-Islamic countries, you don't produce halal products, mm -hmm. but if you venture into this halal product, mm -hmm. your market share will be bigger. Mm -hmm. The penetration to the uh, uh, halal market will be bigger. Mm -hmm. So let's say um, a Korean company produces uh, uh, noodles, non-halal noodles. But if you venture into halal, then you'll be able to penetrate the halal, uh, the, the halal population, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Muslim population for the matter. Mm -hmm. So from a, uh, only a 1 billion uh, size of a market that we are supplying now, you might be able to cater 2.9 billion volume matter. So there's huge potential. Mm -hmm. So um, companies in, in Korea, in Japan are looking at that as well now. And partnering with, uh, creating a pa strategic partnership with the Malaysian companies and venturing into the third country. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, talk about potential, mm -hmm. it's huge, tremendous. While covering Mihas 2024, I learned a lot about halal that I previously didn't know about. I didn't know that the halal industry was so big and consisted of so many different areas. 
Also, I met many diplomats who connect Korea and Muslim majority countries through halal products. It was a very meaningful time because I could feel the popularity of Korean halal products. I'm so proud. Our coverage of Mihas was even more meaningful because, as a diplomacy expert producer, I was able to expand my horizons, encountering fields that I had never known about beyond Korea. The halal industry may still be an unfamiliar area to us, but I hope that through this episode, many people will discover the potential of a new market. And I also hope that Korea and other countries will become closer through halal products. Today is the second day of Mihas. Today is the third day of the Mihas. 적재지각입니다. 적재지각. 맛있다는 